much now, but is about the equivalent of $1,226.81. What's that? Or about 806 pounds in 2015. Yeah, I, I got to tell you that uh, that really wouldn't be enough to incentivize me to murder somebody. Well, <laughs> in fairness, it's not like, nothing for just finding a body. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm not talking about murdering somebody right. for 1200 Well, but wait. Yeah. Actually, I don't know, Joe. 1200 bucks. I might be tempted. That's a good point. Wait, okay. it gets better. Dr. Knox offered any bodies that they bring him further particularly if they were mostly healthy and just died of like oh i don't know asphyxiation or something yeah I'd be he would pay them 10 pounds a body and i'll do some quick i did some quick math and that meant that they in 10 months they would have made a handy twelve thousand four hundred and ninety six dollars in today's but there's actually a better calculation for what it is actually equivalent to with a cost of living, blah, 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 blah. If you want to find out how I got this number, you can email me. I will tell you all about it. I don't want to bore everybody. But it actually is about the equivalent of 210, wait. 211. 211. 211 rounded, yeah. Dollars in 10 months by selling 17 bodies. And murdering 16 people. Murdering 16, well, I don't know, for 211. Killing's a living. I know. That's it wasn't, like, hard. They just yeah. <laughs> got them drunk and suffocated them. <laughs> Anyways, the murders were... Oh, okay, and the murders and the one death were hugely sensationalized, and Hare and Burke were caught and tried. This is Super Cliff Notes' version of this story, because this is not what the story's about. But, essentially, the prosecutors were under the impression that Hare and, and the jury would get confused, because people were dumb then, apparently. <laughs> And they wouldn't convict either one of them. You know, which I, I think the, a jury probably would have convicted both of them. I agree. But, yeah. I think they probably would have too. But because of this, the prosecutors said, oh, well, actually, you know what? Hare is kind of the dummy of the two. So they offered to allow him to become what's uh, do what's known as becoming King's Evidence, which basically means for immunity. He rats out Burke. He rats out Burke. Yeah. He said, yes, I will do that. And it worked, and in 1829, Burke was convicted and hanged. Actually, he was convicted uh, Christmas Eve, 1828, and yeah. executed a month later. you mm-hmm. got to love it, because, I mean, that doesn't happen in this country. No, it, it takes not. It takes 30 years. At least. But here's the best part, is that the, um, the judge in his sentencing said, yeah, you're going to be executed, and also, uh, and also the day after you're executed, you're going to be dissected in public. And he was dissected in public. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, they then took his skeleton, and that is still in the Royal College. Um, I think at least his skull is. I'm not sure if his entire skeleton I, is. Yeah, I know. No, it goes a step further than that. Oh. They actually sold his skin as, like, yep. pocket purses. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, they used it as leather goods, basically, yeah, and sold it. There was, yeah, one, uh, one like, a, I don't know if it was a I can't remember. It was like a card purse or something like that, a little small purse that was made from the, the skin of his hand. And that sold as recently as I don't remember, like 2008 or something like that. Yeah. And it was on, I mean, that's the grossest Lots part. Of money, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I, I don't want to own anything that's made out of somebody's skin. Especially not a murderer. No. Who knows what kind of bad you do that thing to Oh, yeah. Anyways, you can look up this story. You should definitely look oh, up this Burke story. Oh, Burke and Hare is a horrifying it's story. Horrifying and yeah. super fascinating. Oh, yeah. yeah. A yeah. great story. Now, can we get to why I don't like the story? No. Oh, yeah, why? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Do you have more on it? I do. Let's have that. I have that. lots more. So, it's again, it's theorized that there were 17 victims, kind of. So, it could have been similar to the burial for the sailors, kind of in an effigy. What's referred to as a mimic burial is, I think, probably the term you were looking for. Mm-hmm. It's because since the bodies were dissected for science reasons, they... They never got a burial, did they? They never got a burial, so it was supposed to represent them so that their souls could be laid to rest. There is a huge problem, one huge problem at least, and that is that of the 17 victims of Burke and Hare, 12 were women. Mm. And all of the effigies Dolls. look male or don't have yeah. any feminine well, not features. only do they look male that's fine that's even not in their problem. clothes there's yeah. no feminine there's features. no feminine features at all so that's pretty big additionally the there's the problem of who would have created the dolls and that comes into play here because uh burke and hare there was a thought that they one of them did it because they felt bad but burke and hare were apprehended directly after their 17th murder 
Well, and also they were sociopaths, so they probably didn't feel bad. Well, I don't know if they're sociopaths, but I, they don't strike me as the kind of guys who would go to any huge house. I think Hare seems like, well, he, he lived out the rest of his life in misery. Uh, again, you should read the story. He was he not a popular guy. He was not a popular guy, and people no. recognized him everywhere he went. Anyways, some people have suggested that there was an accomplice, because there were lots of accomplices, perhaps, that weren't ever actually convicted of anything um, in regards to the Burke and Hare story. But it seems like those people would want to keep a low profile. <laughs> And maybe carting 17 coffins, no matter how small, into the wilderness would be kind of a high-profile thing. Well, but they're four or five-inch coffins. You can fit those into a bag very easily. Yeah, but even It's not going to be blatantly obvious. I You're think, carrying a bag of stuff. I think that they would have not done anything even wrong. Well, I mean, you know, anything even kind of suspicious. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. But, you know, it's also possible, and I, I, I don't think... I'll just say this. I don't think that the dolls are committed, are connected to the murder in any way. Nor do I, yeah. But, it's, but it is conceivable that maybe somebody, having heard about these 17 people having been died and sent off to be dissected and then basically tossed into the dumpster, maybe somebody got the idea to create these effigies and bury them. Well, I guess it's also probably worth noting that the theory that the dolls were connected to the Burke Hare murders, the Westport murders, wasn't even posited until the 1990s. That That's connection wasn't an issue. made mm -hmm. until the 1990s, and somebody looked back and thought, oh, there's 17 victims. Yeah, that's... Uh, but that's, and the, I know that that's, that's the only Steve's, thing they have in common is the number. Yeah, I think yeah. that that's, you know, st I know Steve has a bunch of stuff to talk about this, but I think that's one of the big ones, right? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, yes. It's so romantic to assign these dolls to this case. What it's a such weird a great romantic notion. It's a romantic notion. Yeah. Uh, we found this connection between the two, and so somebody had remorse. Fair. That's, to me, why people go to it. Mm. Okay, well, to maybe direct who might have been, and I, again, I'm not on the stand of saying that it's connected to these murders, but I know that the wives and children and the woman who owned the boarding house that they were in, they all got out relatively unscathed, but they all had to leave town. Yeah. But yeah. they didn't have to leave town immediately. So if we're going to say this is correct, there is a possibility that they had some bit of remorse or guilt or felt like they needed to do some kind of penance for it. Sure. So that's why they would have gone ahead and done this. Mm. Okay, that's the easy answer. I did a bunch of digging into the time frame and looking at, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is that the use of effigies was something that had been going on in Europe for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And because we talked about the, the sailors thing. Yeah. But, you know, something else that was going on at the time and very close to when the dolls were found, cholera, typhus, and influenza oh, yeah. were rampant in the area. If you look at the, the, the newsprints of the time, uh -huh. all kinds of alerts about this. And it's killing people like mad. Oh, yeah. Well, if your family member dies of cholera at the hospital... They're not giving you that body. No, you're not going to yeah. get the body back. So what do you do? You say, Uncle J or Aunt Janie died. Uncle Janie, maybe, but Aunt Janie, most likely. Mm -hmm. Aunt Janie died, oh, yeah. and we can't do anything. So I'm going to do this little ceremonial thing here. Yeah. And then, oops, well, now Uncle Bob just got typhoid or died of typhoid and then somebody else of influenza all these deaths and it may have just been pure happenstance so the reason that the that's why i think they're there is either it's the sailors or somebody who knew as everybody did a bunch of people yeah who died from some ailment that was just running like wildfire mm -hmm. through the population that's fair. I didn't yeah, no. consider that. No, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's very, very true. Um, another possibility, even though I don't think they would have gone to the bother, is that maybe either Hare or Burke 
built up a little collection of these little dolls. I say, and, and it wasn't because they felt remorse, but because, you know, they had time in their hands and everything like it's that. It's a counting system, basically. Nah, it's kind of like you know, you know, every time you shoot down an enemy fighter, you put a little, you put a little Japanese zero on the side of the nose of your plane. Oh yeah, you know World War II fighters did that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So every time you do it, you create a, you, you grab one of these dolls and make a little coffin for it and put it in the put it in the coffin. And then perhaps one of their one of their wives or you know supposed alleged accomplices realized that holy crap this is kind of incriminating and got rid of it. Although I think that probably more likely to shoot a hole in my own theory, they just would have burned them. <laughs> you know, that's a much simpler scenario. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just that just popped into my head, so I well, thought I'd uh, throw it out there just to fill up a little airtime. Yeah, I guess in in fairness to poke another hole in that. Like I said, Burke and Hare were apprehended within, I think, an hour or two of their first, their last murder. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have had time to do complete the 17th doll. Well, actually, though, maybe maybe they completed the dolls before the murders. I don't think they were that pre-planned. No, actually, they, I, I yeah. doubt. I doubt that they. They seem to dolls. be crimes of opportunity. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, it, well, that's the thing is, you can say, well, the wife or the mistress uh, could have done it, but then again. Why was she doing it? And at what point, why would she have just chucked him in the fire rather than hiking up the yeah. hill uh -huh. and then putting them into a hole? Exactly. I think that oh, the yeah. simpler answer of somebody did it for something other than the Burke hair murders. Is I agree. Oh, yeah, I no. just, you know, I, didn't I, agree. Have, I don't I don't uh, have any good theories about what else. Which is why I went through all the historical documentation to try to find some explanation that was a little more rooted in fact. That's fair. I guess the only thing is that 17 people is a lot of people, but... Well, I mean, but your sphere of influence and, and uh, close relations... Well, yeah. it's not going to be relatively small. It could be. You know, if there was a big, like, say, cholera epidemic or something like that, then, and people had a lot of kids back then, many of them died young. So it could be family members, uh, you could have got a brother and a sister, an aunt and an uncle, maybe one of your parents, and then maybe a whole bunch of other people you know, like schoolmates or whatever. So maybe that was it. I There's know. a host of reasons. And I, I think it's not going to do us any benefit to beat them into the ground. But not really. No pun intended, but yeah. not really. a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, there is. There really is no mystery here. I think, but uh, <laughs> I, I do want to say that I do want to say that uh, it, it is interesting, though. There was a little, a, a lot of a program directed at a lot of people, like especially Hare, of course, and the Dr. Knox, who dissected all these bodies. And it's like, oh, people keep bringing these dead bodies, and you pay them, pay them and, and you pay them for them. You pay these guys for these bodies, and you never say, where are you getting all these bodies from? And he just dissected them, and so. He had mobs showing up outside his house, throwing rocks through oh, his windows. All of the, all of the family, the, oh, the mistress, the yeah. wife, and children—they all had to get out of town. Oh hell yeah, hell so yeah! That was a bad scene. But the dolls. Oh yeah, back oh, yeah. to the yeah, dolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I know. Sorry. I'm sorry. I did a dangerous thing where I brought up a really interesting case that wasn't unsolved. I think that but the, it's super interesting. Yeah. Well, I think it is solved. But <laughs> I think it's solved. Yeah, yeah. But the, I'm yeah. sorry. I meant isn't unsolved. But there's a bunch of points. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're sorry. back on topic, Devin. Where yeah. are we? Where are we going now? We're going nowhere. Yeah. Oh. What? We're we're there. Sorry, guys. That's it. Well, really? Oh, that's all we've got. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the whole, like, that's all the theories. And yeah. Steve came up with a pretty good one, I guess. Like, yeah, I think, uh, I think the lesson is that if you've lost a lot of loved ones, if you want to make little effigies in their honor, uh, do a better job of hiding them so that some, <laughs> little, some little jerk kids won't yeah. come and, and, like, you know, really? you know <laughs> and throw, them each up throw them at each other. Throw Hello? each other. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's it. I... I guess I like Steve Theory the best. <laughs> nah, it's a good one. Yeah. Good one. Although it doesn't explain why they were all dressed like little dudes. Um, they were little soldiers. They're but, little dudes to start with. But you put them, you can put them in little skirts and stuff. If, if it's Aunt Jamie. If you're you imaginative, you can. If you're not, you just dress what you have. I guess that's fair. Mm -hmm. Pants are really hard to make, though. Just like yeah, I would say a skirt would be easier. Way easier. I'm just saying. I understand. Just saying, especially at that size. I work with a bunch of non-creatives. Trust me, I've uh, I know seen things where I'm. What, what, okay. So yeah, do you guys have favorite theories? I know yours is. Well, yeah, I already said mine. Um, I'm still gonna go with the chupacabra. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah.
for theories in this one. I have no opinion whatsoever. On this. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I don't really. I don't uh, care about this yeah. story at all. Yeah. Well, sorry, it's a little short this week. Well, no, I guess I, I do have one opinion, which is that the, the the typical name that is given to this mystery is the Arthur C. Murder Dolls. Uh-huh. And I think that's a really cool name. It is. Yeah, I mean. That's true. Yeah, the mystery well, isn't so cool, but the yeah, the name is well, really again, awesome. Well, again, that's the tie to the Burke and Hare. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Situation. Are, yeah, murder dolls. There's just something so cool and creepy about that. Definitely. But, but yeah, I mean, there's there's really no tie in other than, than the number 17. I agree. Yeah. So if you want to find out how I came up with that weird giant number, I do. You, well, we'll talk about it afterwards. Or you have a theory about what the Arthur C. murder dolls might be, or just the Arthur C. dolls or whatever, you can email us, thinking sideways podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you are probably not listening to us on the website, but you can listen to us on the website. That website is thinking sideways podcast.com. There are some of my research links up there as well. And on that as well, you can find the link to buy merch if you want. We got it. You guys were asking for it, so we did it because we love you. Finally. Finally. We have phasers and what else do we have? Yeah. We have rocket launchers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple airplanes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what kind they are. Do you guys know that? Joe does. Yeah. Joe knows. They're expensive. But if you want something a little cheaper, we also have t-shirts and mugs. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And yeah. phone cases. Oh, yeah. And phone cases. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I am buying one of. <laughs> That's right. I have to buy my own merch. It doesn't yeah. come for free. Nope. Nope. I you don't give that away. find us, or you probably, you could be streaming us also almost anywhere. Uh, you are probably listening to us on iTunes, though. If you do that, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave us a comment and a rating. Those are awesome. It's how other people find us, and I know you want other people to find us. You can find us on Facebook. We have a group and a page. Which has been uber busy. Yep. Like us. Friend us. Friend us, find us. No, no, find us, friend us. Find us, friend us, like us. And then tweet no. us. Please and then, like us. Please. And then and then tweet us. Thinking sideways. No podcast or anything like that. That's okay. We tweet sometimes. <laughs> um, Occasionally we use that Twitter thing. Every once in a while. And I think that's it. Yeah. Usually we do the email at the end. That's why I'm confused about if I've actually told <laughs> yeah. you everything or not. Sorry, I messed that one nah, up. They, they know where to find us. Hey, you guys know where to find us. You're doing good at finding us. So that is everything about dolls. Yeah, creepy dolls. Mm-hmm. This is why I never liked the movie Chuck. Because dolls are creepy. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, they are now. You I, should go watch it. No. No, I didn't watch them. But do go watch Birkin Hair. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It's a fun movie. It's Simon Pegg. It's totally fun. I gotta say, if you can if you can make a, a comedy out of murder, that's awesome. Oh, it's yeah. totally funny and weird. <laughs> I it's Simon it. Pegg. Yeah, okay, I gotta see it. Yeah, and by the way, speaking of Simon Pegg, if you have not seen Shaun of the Dead, well, you better go see it. Any of the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. Really. All right. Bye. <laughs> you know what's funny is if anybody knows this story, every time I read about Burke and Hare, I have a really hard time not visualizing Simon Pegg. Oh, that's fair. Because there's that <laughs> yeah. that movie this is five years old five years ago they made a Burke and Hare and he was uh-huh. in it and every time I read this I see his face. Mm. I cannot help it. Sounds like a personal problem. I to did you. not see that movie. They actually made a movie about Burke and Hare. Oh, it's a bit of a comedy. How do you it's make a, a comedy out of this story? So It's okay. Hollywood. <laughs> and really? it's Simon Pegg. Yeah. Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by the abstract existential horror of the passage of time. Instead, it's supported by the generous donations of our listeners on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash thinking sideways to learn more. And thanks. Thinking Sideways. I don't understand. Stories of things we simply don't know the answer to. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Thinking Sideways, the podcast. I am Devin, joined per huge by... Joe. And Steve. Today we're going to talk about a mystery. Uh, This Uh mystery was 
suggested by Shannon and Savvy and Bree and like Probably everybody a few others. else yeah. in this entire world. Uh, and we're going to talk about the disappearance of Asia Degree. Yeah, I have looked into this one. It's in, rather intriguing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I've read on this one a couple of times as well. Yeah. Let's do a quick overview first and then, you know, hop into everything. Here. Yeah. That quick overview is in the early morning of Valentine's Day 2000, in the year 2000, a nine year old Asia Degree left her house with a packed bag, to- apparently totally of her own volition. And by early morning, we're talking like 3, 4 a.m. Yeah, like yeah. Li- very early morning uh-huh. uh, when it's still dark out. By all reports, her home life was stable. It was safe. It was good. And her family she went had, to church and stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean. They were like, you know, hardworking folks. They were close. She had no history of running away before. And spoiler alert, a lot of people think she was almost brainwashed into leaving her house. That's Ta-da. the chatter you see on the internet. Anyway. It is. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and break that down a little bit. Okay. Let's dig deeper into the timeline first. Or for you guys. Sure. Oh, yeah, cool. Absolutely. Aisha lived in Selby, North Carolina with her parents and her brother, who was older than her. The entire time I was reading it, for some reason I kept thinking it was her younger brother. Uh, <laughs> but he's older than her. Yeah, he's, he's what, a year, year and a half older? I don't think it's a year and a half. He was 10 when she disappeared. She was 9, almost 10. So I think it's really, like, like the matter rapid of fire, nine, one right after the other. Yeah, 9 yeah. or 10 months, maybe. That's one way to do it, man. Get but, it done. But, as far as I can tell, it's never explicitly listed. So, just so you know, but he is older than her. Aisha and her brother were what are what's called latchkey kids. Um, If you're not familiar with that term, basically just means that both of their parents had jobs and so they would come and let themselves in and take care of themselves for a couple hours after school. Mm, Yeah, they were old enough. I mean, they were, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I I did that at that age. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, latchkey's got kind of a negative negative connotation, but eh, not really. No, I think it's okay. I mean, my boyfriend was a latchkey kid when he was younger and Mm -hmm. he turned out fine. Oh, yeah. um, I think most kids turn out fine. Yeah. I wouldn't be too worried about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, the only last few kids that don't turn out fine are the ones that come home and they unlatch the door and there's like a freaking murder or kidnapper waiting for them. I mean, those mm-hmm. guys, they become like mysteries for us. Mm-hmm. But this isn't one of those mysteries, actually. It's not, no, actually. it's not. It's a little different at all. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like Aisha's parents did shelter her and her brother, whose name is O'Brien, from the outside world a little bit. I mean, 9 and 10, that's still pretty young. And they didn't have a computer at home, for instance, Mm. and they weren't really allowed to watch the news or TV very much because as Aisha's mother, whose name is Aquila, uh, she said, you know, every time you turn on the TV, it's just another, like, kid getting abducted or something like that. And Uh she had heard all of the news about kids meeting predators online. Very protective. She was. She was very protective. It's kind of ironic in a sad way. It is, but she also really trusted her kids, and it seems like for good reason, to really kind of respect the rules that um, she and her husband Harold had put into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of them seem like good kids. They seem like really good kids, yeah. They followed the rules, they did well, Mm -hmm. they don't seem to be troublemakers in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, totally. Um, the degrees were social, however. They attended school functions. They attended church and church functions. Um, they had a really close-knit extended family. In fact... Um, what, what, wasn't uh, somebody's dad living across the street? Harold's mom. Harold's mom. And, yeah. and uh, his sister lived across the street. Harold is Asia's dad. Yeah, sorry. I, so, you know, it was, a, it was a close-knit community, I think. And um, I, I don't really... I guess I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. Oftentimes, that is not the kind of community that kids who are running away from home come from. Mm-hmm. Usually, yeah. they come Fair. from more broken communities and homes. Yeah. Usually. Yeah, and where they lived was a really kind of a was it, it was a rural area, but they lived in a little three or six block section. A yeah, little, a little yeah, a little tiny subdivision, you know, and yeah. houses, ranch houses on large lots. Yeah, it seemed know. like a pretty. But it was kind of about the boonies. Yeah, we should say the degrees still live in the house. They do that they were living in in 2000. They they've stayed there the entire time. So. Mm-hmm. That it's not a past tense for them. They continue to live there. Asia and O'Brien, the you know both the kids, they they were both active. They both played in youth basketball, and um, I think Asia softball too. I think she played softball as well. And apparently, she was a really good athlete. She seemed to really enjoy it, and she was really good at it, at least by our reports. However, she was shy. But she's afraid of dogs too. She I was never, afraid I've seen of that, dogs. I've seen that noted several times. She's afraid of dogs and of the dark. 
which is a, you know. It's just not that unusual. Nine. Yeah, it's not that unusual at all. Yeah. I still am scared of certain kinds of dark, and I'm 20 years older than her, so. Yeah, no, no, I'd be afraid of the dark, definitely. Not so much for me. Dogs, no. Dogs are always my buddies, so never yeah. had that issue. I, I mean, my brother was afraid of dogs when yeah. we were growing up, and he, I mean, one of our neighbor's dogs nipped at him once, and he thought, oh, God, it attacked me. It's awful, so he kind of had that built-in fear of dogs. Mm. But overall, I think Aisha was, she was well-behaved. She seemed to really respect the boundaries that her parents were setting for her, and she was pretty shy and all that stuff. So um, that's kind of the background of this. One thing I will just mention briefly, because you'll see it mentioned on the internet before we really dive into the actual timeline of events leading up to her disappearance. Aisha was in fourth grade, and uh, she had recently finished reading a book called The Whipping Boy. That sounds kind of kinky. Uh, it's definitely not that kind of book, Joe. Oh, it's not? For okay. kids. Go oh, oh, okay. It's a children's novel, actually, that is, it's basically about a spoiled prince that can't be punished for his actions, question mark. So his parents, who are the king and queen, I don't know why they can't punish him, but okay, by an orphan boy named Jemmy. I can answer that question. Why? Why they can't punish him? Why? Because kings are considered in certain, at certain times in history, the king was essentially God mm -hmm. and could no, could do no wrong because God could do no wrong. So mm -hmm. therefore you couldn't punish the God. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. where the idea of the whipping boy came from was you wanted to make their friends. So they felt bad that their friend was getting beat didn't really work, but that's where it came from. I guess so that's why they, they wouldn't do it. For me, this is a bit of a diversion, but for me, like you don't have to make it public that you're spanking your child, but if they're a spoiled little brat, maybe like... Well, let's be honest, most of the kings and queens weren't doing the punishing true, themselves it was yeah. a service or doing any it. of the discipline. So or, back to the whipping boy, Yeah. the king and queen buy an orphan boy named Jemmy. Jimmy? Jemmy. I think Jemmy. Jemmy. And uh, he's meant to take the punishment for the spoiled prince. Yeah, I understand that concept there. Yeah. The the prince, I, again, you know, Steve's right on the money there. The concept was that the prince and the boy would become friends and he would feel really bad because he was getting the boy punished so he would stop being bad. But in the meantime, he had a good old time. Right. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it turns out in this book, the prince runs away and demands that Jemmy come with him as his servant because princes don't do anything. There's a long, long story here. Basically, they learn a lot of things. They're joined by a girl for a little while and a dancing bear, I think. Mm, but they eventually return home, safe from their adventures. This is no longer spoiled. The and end. Awesome. The end. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> Except when he comes back home, what he finds out is that after he disappeared, all the servants, afraid of the king's wrath, ran out and found themselves a peasant boy who was a, a double for him. They replaced him. The king and queen, having hardly ever seen their son, were totally fooled. That's a different book, Joe. And then when he returned with his friends, like, hey, I've learned so much life adventures, and the servants went, uh, kid, you're kind of superfluous right now, and they quietly liquidated the prince. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and his friend Jimmy. And so, you know, I guess that the lesson I learned from that book is don't bother learning any life lessons, because you'll probably be killed anyway. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, That's my well. takeaway. Oh. Oh, yeah. anyway, uh, uh, did you want you to say You obviously read that book? book. Oh, many times. I don't think the book has a whole lot to actually do with this story, but y it plays in with the theories, and you will see it time and time again on ev almost every description of this it's, story, so I yeah. feel like it's worth bringing up. I, I feel that it, it's a coincidence, too, I agree. That, and that she didn't run away. But, but I'm, give, I'm, I'm prejudging it, of course. I shouldn't yeah. do that. So let's let's talk timeline. I will say this is this is how you will see it online. It turns out from some research that maybe this is not actually accurate. Mm -hmm. But in 2000, apparently President's Day and Valentine's Day were just a few days apart. So President's Day was the Friday before Valentine's Day, which was on a Monday that year. Yeah, which yeah. I think so actually turns 11th, out yeah. turns out that's not true necessarily. Yeah, now President's Day 2000 was on the 21st. Yeah. 
So not the 11. So, yeah, I talked to a local reporter about why the kids had the day off, and she wasn't really sure. I'm gonna guess it was an in-service day. Yeah, that, she was thinking it was probably like a teacher's work day or an in-service day or something like yeah. that. But she wasn't totally sure. But yeah. she didn't, but it wasn't President's Day. But obviously. the kids did have the day off. So they, they had, had the day three off. Three that doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. That's the bottom line. But yeah. Aisha and O'Brien had so they had the Friday off. But you know, obviously their parents did not. So their parents were at work on Friday. So they spent the day at their aunt's house. I'm not sure if the rules were different. I've never seen any elaboration on their time at the aunt's house or even like who that aunt like is related to or anything like that. But apparently spent the day there and I don't know if the rules were different. For instance, if they had access to a computer there.